Hi, today we're talking about electric force and in this problem it says determine the force on Q3 due to the other two charges express your answer in vector format. Alright, so we got three charges they are separated by a distance of 4.35 centimeters. So uh, we've got what we're trying to find is uh, the force on Q3 uh, due to uh, the charges of Q1 and Q2. So first thing we're going to do is draw a little diagram. So we know that a positive and a negative force uh, are going to attract each other. And so this Q1 is going to be pulling Q3 towards it with this force. All right? So the same thing for Q2, since it's also a positive and Q3 is a negative, we are going to draw a vector that looks like that. And the reason why this vector, the magnitude, is greater um, is because Q2 is greater than Q1. The charge is 6.3 and Q1 is only 2.1. Alright, so what we need to find is, uh, imagine if you could keep Q1 and Q2 stationary. They were just held down. Um, what would happen to Q3 if we released it? Um, and of course this is your x-axis, your y-axis. Q3 is at the point of origin, which means x equals 0, y equals 0. So we're going to try to find the vector, uh, the magnitude of the force on Q3, as well as the direction of travel. Okay, And as you can kind of imagine, um, it's probably going to look something like this. Um, and the reason why it's more to the y-axis is because this Q2 up here has a greater charge. So it's going to be pulling it with a greater force than Q1 is. Okay? And uh, and that's why. So let's work this problem out. So we're going to be using the equation F equals K, which is Coulomb's constant, times uh, charge 1 times charge 2 divided by R squared. Alright, so for the first thing we're going to do, um, we are going to find the force of Q1 to Q3. Alright, and so we're going to take K, which is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth power, and uh, the units that's going to be in, um, just to show you, so we can uh, cancel off to show you what we're left with, is going to be in uh, Newton meters squared divided by coulomb squared. Alright, All right, so we are going to put that in brackets just to show you. Alright. Alright, now we take uh, the charge of Q1, which is 2.1 microcoulombs. So we say 2.1 micro coulombs and we're going to multiply that by this uh, negative charge which is 0.89 okay so we got 0.89 micro coulombs and the reason why I didn't include the negative sign is because when you're dealing with this force you don't really uh, need to worry about that um, the negative sign just is more uh, of an indication of which way the charge is going to be going. Okay, so and then we're going to divide it by the radius squared, and we said our radius or the distance is going to be 4.35 centimeters. Uh, of course, we need this in meters, so we say 0 0.0435 meters squared. Right. And we are going to multiply that out. And just to um, show you that the units cancel out, well, we've got two C's up here. So we have a Coulomb and a Coulomb. And so those Coulomb squared are going to cancel out. We've got meter squared there. And so uh, this meter squared is going to cancel out. And you're left with Newtons. All right, so go to our calculator. And we've got this first uh, 
function. I've already done it just to save a little bit of time. And uh, we're left with roughly 8.9 newtons. Okay, so it's going to equal 8.8 seven nine five four newtons all right now on to the force from q2 to q3 so we just do the same thing uh, we say force from q2 to q3 is going to and i just um wrote that out to show you that the units cancel out uh, i'm just going to write k this time so k times our uh, q2 charge which is 6.3 micro coulombs and we are multiplying that by the charge of q3 which is uh, 0.89 micro coulombs right. and uh, the radius, of course, or the distance between them is going to be this uh, 0.0435 meters, and that is going to be squared. And when we do that, we get two or 26.6 newtons. All right, so we get 26. Point six three eight two newtons, and I try to keep my answers um, with as many decimal places until the very end, uh, just so it's as accurate as possible. All right, so what do we do now? Now we've got to find uh, the x and y components of each of these forces. So for force. Q13. Um, so we're going to have to use a little bit of trig, and for the x and y component. So Q1 is uh, on the x axis with Q3, right? Um, so that's going to be our magnitude uh, times cosine, and it is separated by, so if you were to go like this. Okay. That's going to be 180 degrees. Now, we know, or you should know, uh, that cosine 180 um, is going to give you a negative 1. Um, but just, uh, it's kind of good to just write it out so you don't skip steps. Um, so anyways, so we take the force... which is uh, this right here, okay? And we say, we multiply that by cosine 180, all right? So that's gonna be for our x component. And then for the, here, so we'll just write this x component, all right? And then we are gonna add the y component, which is gonna be the force times sine of 180. And if you are good in trade, you know that is zero. <laughs> I'm just writing it out uh, just to show you in case we had a different example um, where we had a different degree where it wouldn't equal zero. Okay, so this, so we know that's going to equal zero. But for the x component, uh, we say so we took the, the force, uh, which was 8.8794 newtons, sine 180, and we got zero. Okay, so now we do the cosine, or for the x direction, and we get a negative 8.87954, which is exactly, we know that uh, cosine 180 is going to give us a negative 1, so it's just going to be the magnitude times negative 1, and that's what we got, so we're good. All right, so we got a negative 8.8795 um, 
and then it's going to be in Newtons, but just um, make sure you note that this is a scalar. Okay. And of course, we've got zero in the y. All right, so for that's for uh, q13. Now we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to say for q23. All right, so now this is going to be a little bit different, and you're going to need to know a little bit of geometry. But what do we use for cosine for that? Well, it's going to be the, uh, the angle in degrees from this positive x-axis all the way to here. And so you're probably wondering, you know, what is that? Well, here's how you figure that out. Okay, so we know that this is an equal lateral triangle, meaning all sides are equal, which means all degrees are going to be equal. And we know that the sum of the sides of a triangle, okay, so a triangle is going to give us 180 degrees, right? And so you can say, if we were to do theta here, uh, that's going to give us 60 degrees, and same thing here, 60 degrees and 60 degrees, right? Um, so if we know that this angle is 60 degrees, uh, and we know that uh, the entire uh, from x from okay so from here this yellow line all the way to here that's going to be 180 so we say 180 minus 60 degrees is going to leave us with theta equaling 120 degrees so that's what we are going to use for theta okay so we say cosine 120, that's going to give us our x component plus the force of sine 120, and that is going to give us our y component. Okay, so when we do that, um, so we've got the magnitude, right? And we do the cosine 120 and the sine 120, and these are going to be the um, values, a negative 13.3 and a positive 23. All right, so go back here. Um, okay, so for this x we had negative 13.31931 newtons. All right. Plus, the y value, the y component is going to give us positive 23.06972. And this, um, if you just take a look at it, this adds up. Um, so, as you can see, the direction from this force. We are going in the positive y direction, which is why this y is positive. And for the x direction, we are going in the negative x direction. Okay, and, um, and it correlates with this one up here too. We've got a negative uh, x component, and that's because we are pulling it into the negative x direction. All right, so uh, to get the net force, we just take the x's plus the y's. Um, so for the x's we are going to use obviously <laughs> that and we are going to add it up and we get um, okay. so when we add it up uh, we're going to get a negative 22.2 alright so for the x for f net of x, we get negative 22.2 newtons. Okay. And then for the y, well, it's, <laughs> uh, we got 0 up here, so it's just going to be 23. 23.1. Uh, 
one for the y component. Okay, so this is called um, rectangular rectangular format. Format, okay, and uh, that's good. Um, now let's do polar. All right. So we need to get one magnitude, and to do that, you're going to take the x and y components, and uh, we're going to do the famous a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we take the square root here. So we say negative 22.2 squared. So obviously that negative is going to go away. Plus 23.1 squared. And when we do that, um, we get 32.02. Uh, okay. So let's put 20. I'm sorry. 32. Point zero newtons. Okay. And then how do we find? So that's going to be the magnitude of the vector. Now we need to figure out the direction and to do that we just use a little bit of trig and we say tangent negative 1 over the y value over the x value, right? So it's going to be tangent negative 1 and uh, we take that 23.1 divided by that negative 22.2 and that's going to give us negative uh, 46.1 degrees and okay so when you do that so that's going to give us negative 46.1 degrees but we know um, that it's going to the answer is going to have to be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees right uh, because from here, so from here to here, uh, that's you know 90 to 180. So you just take 180 degrees and you subtract your answer, and uh, then we're going to fall in that region. And when we do that, take that. So we take the 180 and we subtract this, and we get 133.9, uh, or you can just round up and say 134. So it's going to give us 134 degrees. So how you would write that in polar form, you would say, so polar form, you would say 32.0 newtons at 134 degrees. Okay, so it's kind of a long problem, uh, but if you get good at this, you will be able to just knock these out of the park and it'll be really easy. Hope that helped.